my name is Evelina and I'm happy to be here and talk a bit about uh, innovative solutions, business models and forecasts for structural fashion in Poland. And I will continue a bit topic that Elisa just started. And so let's begin with the reason uh, why we're talking about it. I don't know if my slides are okay. Um, the Earth's population is increasing, so the demand for clothing uh, is also increasing. Millions of tons of raw materials per year will be needed to produce new fabrics. So increasing efficiency, quality improvements and innovations in many areas are key issues for the fashion industry. Um, so innovative thinking is becoming a, some kind of tool that uh, involves the implementation of more effective uh, technological processes, organizational systems, ventures, products and services. Growing concerns about fair wages, environmental pollution and the um, need to meet the expectations of today's consumer are supported by new technologies. And according to many theoreticians and practitioners, the circular economy is a short path for fashion. And within it, you can also think in an innovative way. But don't let circularity become a new sustainable. So the word which now can mean like everything or nothing. We need to clarify popular slogans. Circular fashion uh, as a solution allows to regenerate natural systems, um, somehow redefines values and creates new opportunities for the future of fashion. There are a lot of discussions about um, new business models, a lot of conferences like this and lectures on innovation, uh, sustainability and circularity. However, uh, there is, uh, I would say, the willingness to discuss, uh, but not the willingness to act, uh, willingness to educate, but less to implement ideas. And I think it loses us as creators, as strategists, uh, designers, business owners, and as people, we have a lot of ideas and we like to multiply them uh, all the time, but it's time to act uh, in small steps. So I will present su such small steps uh, in today's presentation. Uh, <clears throat> if you are at this conference, you must have already encountered a similar chart. Uh, as I said, we know it. Now we have to implement it in organizations. Uh, and why circular fashion? This approach transforms the way products are designed and used, helping to reduce emissions along uh, the chains. Uh, for fashion to achieve climate goals, a fundamental change is needed in a way, uh, is needed in a way the global economy works. And uh, circular fashion allows, to, uh, allows this regeneration of natural systems, as I said, and avoid um, wasting resources, also energy and money, simply speaking. And seeing how many things already exist and how to make use of them is a true expression of innovation and creativity. And let's see uh, what are the possibilities in Poland. How does the industry in Poland look like, uh, looks like in the terms of uh, numbers? There are about 22,000 entities operating in the Polish fashion sector, about 13,000 companies producing clothing and about 6,000 companies producing textiles. In Poland, actions come, uh, action comes from, I would say, three main pressures, market, regulatory, and social. And the pressure uh, exerted by business partners, customers, and suppliers is very visible on the local market. And the financial sector uh, is starting to verify the non-financial ratios of its clients while at the same time, uh, the financial sector itself is under regulatory pressure. So find out more uh, this year, as Elisa said before, as a part of the annual Fashion Revolution Week, uh, the Polish branch of uh, our organization gathered experts to discuss what areas, entities, uh, institutions and ideas are necessary for the circular economy in fashion in Poland and what are the outlooks and forecasts for the future. Its aim was to recognize the biggest challenges 
uh, related to circular fashion in Poland, but also to exchange views, uh, experiences and ideas that could contribute to introducing real shifts in the industry. Knowing that changes should come from many sides, the discussion was attended by uh, lawyers, um, directors of sustainable development department, uh, companies um, dealing with collection and uh, recycling of textiles, uh, originator of a startup for virtual fashion design, um, founder of an upcycling platform, an expert of um, in the field of education, lecturer, um, research manager in one of the world's largest consulting companies, uh, manager related to the ecological packaging, what is also important with, and packaging are also fashion, uh, reporter, economist, and uh, urban activist. Uh, it was agreed that decent regulations, which are slowly coming, would cause a faster transformation of the industry from linear to circular. But each entity participating in the system has a big role to play. And the consumer should influence governments and corporations to accelerate these changes. But it is collective cooperation, not burdening one group with a problem. Under Paris, under the Paris Agreement, uh, if governments commit to informing the public about uh, progress towards achieving goals, fashion players should also report based on their credible uh, actions that should be implemented. And according to the latest report uh, by BCG and Vogue Polska, which uh, describes the behavior of Polish consumers, uh, what is interesting, more than a half of the responders associate sustainable fashion with recycling and upcycling. So I think it's a big potential to start from uh, this point. And uh, in my opinion, also the, the biggest challenge in Poland is a little, um, I would say, stagnation, passivity, a very long um, decision making process in uh, um, and because of that, uh, a little commitment to uh, circular economy issues. But now I will move on to uh, more optimistic observations. I will focus on an attempt to define uh, the areas of innovation within circularity in Polish fashion industry. In this context, I will show some solutions uh, existing on the local market that have an impact on the development of sustainable practices and the transition to a circular economy in the fashion industry uh, with particular emphasis on um, innovative startups, new processes, uh, supply chain management and design. Uh, some Polish brands um, have already recognized a necessity to, to benefit of uh, implementing innovative ideas and sustainable development uh, strategies and are uh, starting to somehow introduce uh, new business models. Uh, but innovation in circular fashion can be seen as changing the, the existing paradigms on many levels, as Elisa said before. Um, the <clears throat> redefinition of the creation of new values can be discussed, discussed on, um, um, in context of um, design models, their advantages and disadvantages in relation to circular economy and risks. Uh, as well as in the context of the use of uh, existing materials, planning and production technology. Secondly, materials, the possibility of the processing and insulation, what is very important nowadays. Uh, what is more transport, energy, water, waste, uh, packaging and many more. Um, but, uh, but a huge role um, plays also the change of thinking, yeah? uh, managing and planning and definition the future of the fashion uh, system and innovation itself. The first startup um, that I want to, to, to show you is Bio to Materials. It's an innovative um, startup um, that produces alternative to animal and synthetic leather. It is 100% biodegradable and free of harmful substances. Material is made of apple pomace, the largest organic waste from fruit and vegetable processing in Poland. 
um, and pomace is the pulpy residue remaining after fruit and um, um, has been crushed in order to um, extract each juice. During the season, uh, the season uh, about 500 tons of pomace are produced per day. So the business model and the production process here are based on the, the circular economy. And thanks to this, they introduce a more effective uh, production process. <clears throat> the next idea, where fits. Uh, there is a lot of research that shows that augmented reality uh, guarantees a higher conversion and lower number of returns, which are also a, a big problem in the fashion industry. Um, and Polish, but uh, currently on average, it is like 30% of products purchased online are returned. Um, and Polish startup Werfits creates solution based on digitizing products for a 3D model using AR in sales and now working also on a project to build an automated footwear scanner. So simply speaking, here you can see clothes that do not exist um, physically and no production infrastructure is needed. And besides uh, streamlining the, the mention process, uh, let's imagine a world where we are here uh, at the conference uh, wearing virtual clothes so uh, we don't know we, we don't have to buy new ones so water transport raw materials are saved of course in fact uh, virtual clothes also leave a footprint and energy is needed to produce them but a dozen times less <clears throat> with a current state of recy uh, recycling uh, this is a complicated issue uh, and this is not an ideal solution for circular fashion um, but it is one of them recycling and upcycling um, uh, are related to the circular economy and can optimize resource management and minimize waste and i think should be implemented in the company structure but what is more you can also make it um, an idea for an innovative business concept an idea for a specific product like here. For example, plastic entered our reality just a century ago and immediately has dominated our, um, our times. Yeah, uh, plastic is often disposable. So the designer Orska reached for post-industrial plastic and processed it. A jewelry interpretation of plastic created uh, a collection uh, which is um, in which a synthetic stone made of plastic was created. Uh, the new stones uh, were made by uh, Veronica Banas and the Boom Plastic team. Julie had proved that an object of desire uh, can be created even from one of the most problematic uh, and the cheapest, in fact, materials in the world. <clears throat> Dead stock, uh, leftovers, uh, clippings, are also a big problem of fashion. In this startup, Circular Scrap uh, collects, simply collects unsold leftovers and materials from suppliers um, and sewing factories, designers, upper brands uh, are now, um, which is uh, not, not good, and sufficiently concerned with adhering to product life standards throughout the supply chain. Um, of course, for economic reason, brands, brands try to maximize the use of materials, but it's not always, I would say, successful. And for this reason, clippings, um, waste and materials just end up in the bin. So Circular Scrap set, sells uh, of um, creating sets of these leftovers and production surpluses and sells it. Upcycling. So, so the process of transforming uh, apparent waste um, or unwanted items into a new full value products of much better quality. Uh, it is a method where old components, scraps, fabrics and, or objects are modified in uh, such a way that they gain a, simply a second life. Um, in this way, the life of raw materials is extended, but why am I um, saying that it is innovation? Uh, the term upcycling was first used in print in 1994. So 
like we all remain our clothes, right? But all brands, uh, all big brands, I, I don't know, can, can see it, but on a large scale, this is not yet sufficiently happening. Um, and such creators show that it is possible and it is environmentally and financially profitable. And SFI, uh, another uh, startup, uh, the, because the problem of, uh, of fashion industry is also the lack of solution, a uh, solution enabling to comprehensive, wise and transparent management of the supply chain and the production process, as well as difficult access to good quality suppliers. And um, I see there is a big problem in finding credible suppliers who just meet the sustainability criteria. Um, in fact, small brands, not only in Poland, um, with limited budgets, very, uh, suffer greatly. Uh, and on the other side are big brands having money for uh, you know, better solutions, and, but they report non-financial information in um, differently and inconsistently. So it's hard to compare their efforts. So in the end, we don't know what they are doing well, what they are not doing good and whether whether they are doing anything or just writing about plans in their reports uh, this is due to the lack of infrastructure to manage and monitor relevant indicators sfi provides clothing companies with comprehensive system for supply chain management and measurement with um, of a development indicators the solution created by SFI allows to somehow organize information related to um, transformation in the spirit of sustainable development, uh, supply chain management, um, supplier verification, as well as training of employees in the field of CSR. It ensures compliance with standards, uh, saves resources, time and money, simply speaking, uh, because a good strategy and good management towards sustainable uh, development is um, a basis. And this startup uh, helps in this. But uh, these are small examples uh, that can inspire change. Um, there is uh, so much talk about changes in fashion, as I said, but it's, I think it's worth uh, asking fashion people, where are we now? how much we already um, know about circular fashion, about innovation and about a place uh, from which we start and where we are going. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a hypothetical psychological phenomenon in which unskilled people uh, in some areas of life tend to overestimate their skills in that area while good highly qualified people tend to underestimate their skills this is why i think uh, education is the most important and uh, establishing uh, cooperation as a second tool uh, to not to stagnate and not to generate ideas without realizing them as i uh, mentioned before to sum up the circular economy uh, as defined by the european parliament aims to manage resources in the most sustainable and uh, responsible um, way towards the environmental and uh, society and within business models can emerge to share borrow reuse uh, repair refurbish and recycle existing materials uh, and products for as long as possible and the implementation of the assumption of circular economy requires uh, cooperation simply between the public and the private sector, as well as investments in development and materials innovation, and I would say innovative thinking. Is it worth it? Cavemen left behind uh, wall paintings, Romans aqueducts, let the fossils created today take a more beautiful form than just useless garbage. Thank you. <laughs>